to Wake Up with Sally Mack and Lena. Stretch it out. Here we go. Texas is expanding vaccine eligibility. Starting Monday, millions more Texans can get their shots. And the United States is buying 100 million more doses. So are you now on the list? And you're waking up to that $1,400 stimulus check now just one step away. So are you getting one? How much can you expect? How do you get it faster? And should you file your taxes first? And the Rangers are the first professional sports team to invite you back to a full stadium. So our concerts and shows on their way as well. Let's take a look at all that. That's just a couple things we're working on for you this morning. Welcome. Good morning to you. Thursday, next stop Friday, Sally, as I like to say. Just put you in the right frame of mind first thing in the morning. Yes, we seem to have uh, scared off Mike this week. He's taking an early weekend, but hey, we've got meteorologist Stephen Morgan joining us. Always a good start to the day when you've got Stephen in the house. Hey, Stephen, good morning. Sally, Lena, good morning to you. Yeah, I always like coming in on the tail end of the week because there's always that excitement for the weekend. And as we head toward the weekend, temperatures going to remain on the mild side, just like we were yesterday. A lot of areas warming into the upper 70s. And this evening, this morning, we're still on the warm side with temperatures area wide in the upper 60s and the low 70s. Look at these highs just from yesterday. 78 degrees, which is a nice five, six degrees warmer than what we should be this time of year at Bush Airport. Hobby also reaching 78, 75 down in Galveston. 80s though, up in College Station and Brenham. Even Conroe had a high yesterday of 80 degrees. We're at 69 degrees this morning. Waking up, not really needing that jacket this morning. 71 in Hallettsville and LaGrange. We do see the upper 60s though elsewhere. Clouds, not too much of an issue this morning. Really what we're dealing with still is that strong Gulf breeze out of the south and southeast. We'll see that anywhere between 10 to 15 miles per hour. So those headlines, another warm and breezy one today, a very slight shower chance this afternoon. If you were one of the lucky ones to see a couple of sprinkles yesterday, that's what's going to happen again today. A cold front, though, is set to arrive on Sunday, bringing a higher chance for rain across the region. And then storms are also going to be possible, which I'll highlight coming up in the full forecast, but it's mainly going to be north of the Houston area. So today, Today, we're going to warm once again into the upper 70s. Could even see, I think, 80, 81 degrees here in the Houston area. More on those rain chances. And if we're going to be cooling off with this cold front, all coming up in that full forecast here in a bit. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Starting on Monday, anyone 50 and up here in the state of Texas will be eligible to get a coronavirus vaccine. Now, left out of the new group, younger essential workers. Fox 26's Natasha Geigel joins us live now with more on why the state chose to prioritize a certain age group instead of occupation. Hi, Natasha. Well, good morning, Sally. And currently there are just about 9% of all Texans that have been fully vaccinated. And as we know, there are many others that are currently waiting for when their turn will come for them to get vaccinated. Now, as we've been reporting, there are currently three types of the coronavirus 19, uh, the COVID-19 vaccine that has been approved by the FDA. And much progress has been made in administering doses since mega sites have popped up in various locations. Now, this new group of age 50, years and older will be labeled group 1C and has been chosen next since over 93% of Texas fatalities from the virus has been in those 50 and older and about 20% of those are people ages 50 to 64. The goal is that by including this next vulnerable group, the state will drastically reduce the number of hospitalizations and deaths. This is really the time for everybody to hunker down and realize that we cannot afford another surge on top of where we are at the baseline right now. And the concern remains the same, even signing up for the vaccine. So as soon as you know that you are qualified and you're in one of those groups, you want to sign up as quickly as you can and get on a wait list. Now, if you want more information on how you can do that, we've got you covered if you head on over to our website, fox26houston.com. Natasha Geiger reporting, Fox 26 News. 
If you are a veteran, good morning to you. Veterans of all ages enrolled in VA healthcare can now get vaccinated as well. The VA is hosting three clinics today through Saturday. No appointment is needed. These are either walk-in or drive-through. Today and tomorrow, you can go to the main medical center in Houston from 10 to 4 or from 8 to noon on Saturday. There will also be a clinic on Saturday at the Texas City VA Outpatient Clinic and another one at the Rosenberg VFW Post 3900. Three. Now, both of those are happening from 8 until 2 or while supplies last. All right, different topic here, but I know you're focused on this one. Big story today. Your next stimulus payment cleared another hurdle yesterday, and the House of Representatives signed off on it without a single Republican vote. That nearly $2 trillion bill now moves over to the White House. President Biden says he'll sign it as soon as he sees it. That's expected to happen tomorrow. And this is the bill that includes another stimulus check for up to $1,400 for about 90% of Americans, including children. The checks will go to people who file taxes individually up to $75,000 and a couple who files together for up to $150,000. Now, if you make five to $10,000 more, you'll still get a payment. It's going to be smaller, though. The bill also extends federal unemployment payments of $300 a week through Labor Day. It also has a child tax credit, bumps it up to almost double what you get now. There's money in there as well for schools, restaurants, health care, vaccines. Now, Democrats say it's better to go too big big because of the economy fallback. Republicans say, though, there's a lot of stuff in there that's not related to COVID. With the Federal Reserve printing about this amount of money is inevitably going to result in inflation. To listen to my friends on the other side of the aisle, you wonder, where do they live? Because according to them, all this has been resolved. The pandemic is gone. Now, you're probably wondering, what else is in there? What else should we expect? Well, we're breaking it down even further for you with a deeper dive coming up at 430 with a live look from Washington on what's in that 628-page bill. All righty. Thanks, Lena. More help is coming for Houstonians who suffered during last month's deadly power outages and winter freeze. The Houston City Council has now approved a measure to prevent water bill spikes. This will adjust water bills for the estimated 25% of homes where water was leaking because of burst pipes. Late fees will also be suspended and Public Works will continue to provide water for those behind on bills rather than disconnect service. Flood control projects approved by Houston voters in response to Hurricane Harvey are facing a nearly $1.5 billion shortfall that could cause delays. The projects are in some of the area's poorest neighborhoods that have repeatedly flooded. The Harris County Flood Control District was told to create a plan by the end of June to make up the shortfall. All right, let's take a look at those overnight headlines for you. New this morning, we'll start in the sunny side area. A 16-year-old shot in the chest is in critical condition this morning. About 10 last night on Grasmere and Ferdinand, investigators say the victim was in a driveway with friends when he was shot, taken to the hospital with a collapsed lung. Investigators right now piecing together why he may have been targeted or if it was random. Also, a man was stabbed to death at a gas station. Houston police say left his apartment where he drove to a nearby gas station on Bissonette near Wilcrest in Aleaf. Someone from the apartment apparently followed him and attacked him and then ran away. A description of the person they're looking for not yet released. Also this, a shooting at an apartment complex in Chinatown ends with three people dead and another injured. It happened on Ranchester Drive near the Beltway about 11 o'clock. Investigators say people were drinking in the parking lot when a couple um, or some men pulled up in a car threatening them. About 10 minutes later, they came back, opened fire, and hit four people. An 18-year-old man and woman were both killed, also another man. Another 18-year-old woman was taken to the hospital and is expected to survive. Police have no one in custody at last check and a minimal description of who they're looking for. We now know more about a new charge in the case of the deadly no-knock raid two years ago on Harding Street. A woman named Patricia Garcia has pleaded guilty to false information and hoaxes after she was arrested for making fake 911 calls. She was a neighbor of Regina Nichols and Dennis Tuttle, who police shot and killed in that raid. A dozen Houston police officers have either been charged or indicted in connection to that raid.
That story just keeps developing. It is nine minutes after the hour. Still to come, um, setting a record with a more than 2,000 mile hike. You're gonna hear from a 78 year old on the secret to tackling such a big journey. Also, in just 60 seconds, states across the country lifting their coronavirus restrictions. Every state rolling back in some way. We're taking a look at the latest to roll back.